and show them who the fuck we are. Bowman, Bowman. Let me get the guns out again one more time. Haney, ghetto rally, insult them, curse at them, and get them all riled up. Bowman, Bowman. Prompt the suffering a major defeat. Progressive Congressman Jamal Bowman lost his Democratic primer, uh, primary in New York by double digits to a pro Israel moderate. And Brooke Singman is here with the results. Brooke. Hey, good morning, you guys. Yeah, this highly anticipated race highlights the deep divide on the left over the war in Gaza, and it was a blowout victory for Westchester County Executive George Latimer. The moderate Democrat taking the party nomination by double digits to unseat progressive Congressman Jamal Bowman in what is now the most expensive primary in American Democrat history. Against Democrat, all hands on deck to take down the thug Congressman Bowman. <laughs> One of the squad members out. Jamal Bowman, you saw the charming gentleman. I have more to give to you in reference to all of his charm and all of his glory. So this man, one of the members of the squad who, as you've seen, is a thug. And we're not going to just say thug like, in oh, he's, he's a thug. Okay, a rough neck, right? A rough neck thug. And he lost his race. And now he's decided that, well, it's racism. It's because of racism I've lost this race. It's because of racism. They're afraid of this black man. And so, friend, we're going to talk a little bit today about Jamal Bowman his race. We're going to look at a debate between him and the winner. And we're going to look at an interview with him in the view, explaining who he is, all of that coming up right now on The Conservative Poet. Hello, friend, and welcome to The Conservative Poet. My name is Amanya. Here on the channel, I do political reactions commentary. I throw some humor in there to drive home the crazies or what I call, I give you the hammer by driving it home of what we're seeing in the society. And I mean the madness and the craziness that we're seeing. So if that is something that interests you, then I would ask that you communicate with the video. Maybe you can give it a thumbs up or maybe a thumbs down. Uh, you can comment. We like to talk it out in the comment section, or maybe you can subscribe. If you, if you found your place, if you found a tribe that you'd like to grow with, then I welcome you to subscribe. So let us get into this video right now. You could put lipstick on a pig and it's still a pig. You could put a monkey in a suit and it's still a monkey. You could put a dress on a man and he's still a man, right? So these are truths. And so Jamal Bowman sits down with our friend Sonny from The View and have an interview in reference to who he is. He portrays himself, he says he's a teacher, he was a principal. This man was shaping young children. And you saw a little bit of his truth out there in front of his constituents, but we're gonna play a little bit more of that. But first we're gonna take him as the dressed up pig or the dressed up thug that he really is. Let's go. Please welcome two term Congressman Jamal Bowman. Thank you for joining me. Good to be welcome. here, thank you. Now for those who may not know, you were born and raised in New York City. Mm -hmm. Prior to being elected to Congress in 2020, you were a longtime educator and former middle school principal. What encouraged you to transition <laughs> into politics of all things? Yeah, so I worked in education for 20 years. Uh, started as an elementary school teacher in the South Bronx, 
before becoming a high school guidance counselor and dean of students, mm. before having the privilege of opening my own middle school in the Northeast Bronx and serving as the principal for 10 years, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. When you work directly with kids and you work directly with families, you see what they go through on a day-to-day -day basis, and you realize education is not just about education, it's about food security and housing security and poverty and trauma and so many other issues. And I was just tired of my kids going through it, and I felt like elected officials weren't really speaking to their struggles and their challenges. And so the year before I decided to run, 34 kids died within the K-12 school system in the Bronx and 17 died by suicide. Mm. And no one was making a connection between their trauma, their lived experiences, and policy. So I just got upset and I said, you know what, I'm going to run for office, see if I can make a difference. Wow. Well, as a kid from the South Bronx Projects, thank you. Of course. Um, <laughs> thank you. seem to he doesn't seem to be too too smart so here you are a black man and obviously he's um he's of the thuggish realm i've already said that so here you are this black thuggish man who doesn't seem to appear to be so so very smart you were a teacher then you became a guidance counselor to young young minds and then you opened up your own school and and then you said you know what it's i i, I want to make more of a difference so then you you ran for office and you became a congressman this is a black man in new york city right but yet america is racist towards the blacks i mean this man does not seem to be too he doesn't seem to be the sharpest tool in the shed right but here you are reach one of the highest offices in the land as a black man from the Bronx. It's, it's still not enough, right? It's not enough to have all of these accomplishments when you don't even have an actual clue. George Latimer even accused you of playing the ethnic game. Yeah. Um, as the first African-American to represent your district, do you believe that racism is playing a role in this election? Yes, um, but not just in this election, in our country. Um, explicit racism and implicit bias continue to plague us as a people because we haven't dealt with it directly. Again, it's in a similar category to anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, sexism, mm -hmm. and all of the isms that continue to plague us. My opponent, unfortunately, has a history of fighting back against or fighting for the continued segregation of Westchester County. He also has a history as county executive of not really having an anti-racist agenda because of the segregation and separation that remains within the county. And so it's important for us to speak to that and speak mm -hmm. about those issues. But we also have to follow that up with policy and budget items to make sure we're investing in areas of the district that have been left behind. Now, meanwhile, listen to the message that the first black congressman in the Bronx had to say to his constituents. We are in the South Bronx. We are in the South Bronx. This is the birthplace of hip hop. I am the hip hop congressman. I want to hear South Bronx chant right now. South Bronx. We're gonna 
show the motherfuck we are. Bold men, bold men. Seen that, heard that, good. Uh, Westchester County Executive um, George Latimer, what is your message to voters? Why should they vote for you? Have you earned their vote? I think so, yes. <laughs> I think I have. You know, I've only been in office three years. Mm -hmm. uh, we've brought over a billion dollars back to the district and focused on some very specific areas that people care mostly about. Mm -hmm. Like we brought in $40 million to reduce gun violence, $88 million for flood mitigation and climate justice, millions to invest in education and health care, especially mental health and especially mental health for our seniors, and millions to invest in workforce development, what we call the social determinants of public health. When you invest in these areas, what you see is crime go way down and health and education and economic outcomes go way up. But most importantly, I'm an educator. I'm a person from the working class, and I govern and fight for working class people. My opponent, unfortunately, it, he governs mostly for the wealthy, and he doesn't support the wealthy paying their fair share. And so do we want an educator, working class person in Congress, or do we want someone that's going to continue to govern for special interests? I think I would choose the educator. Mm. Well, if you... Bowman and his opponent are leftist progressives, right? They are. But it's the issue of Israel and Palestine that separates the two. And so from there, he was able to raise, his opponent was able to raise all of this money from APAC, right? And so they were able to get to the constituents and the constituent says, yeah, we prefer that guy over you. And based on his Bowman performance, that we that we're seeing right here with you know the way he's reacting and and cursing at the people and just this this I don't even know what but people was like yeah that is that doesn't leave a, a good taste in her mouth that's not a good look friend you know pumping yourself up like you some sort of I don't know what but yeah the people said no we're going with the other progressive liberal and you're out Bowman and his opponent are leftist progressives, right? They are. But it's the issue of Israel and Palestine that separates the two. And so from there, he was able to raise, his opponent was able to raise all of this money from APAC, right? And so they were able to get to the constituents and the constituent says, yeah, we prefer that guy over you. And based on his Bowman performance that we, that we're seeing right here with, you know, the way he's reacting and, and cursing at the people and just this, this, I don't even know what, but people were like, seen that, heard that good friend. If you live in a Democrat stronghold area like I do, then I don't have to tell you the stress of listening to people like Jamal Bowen and the rest of the Democrats. So for that kind of stress, I burn candles. And today I'm offering you our new patriotic candles to get 30% off the regular price. I have them in five different scents where you can burn your stress away, burn your stress away with these crazy Democrat politicians, if you live in their area. So you get 30% off, go to orlandopatriot.com and get yourself some stress relief. Thank you. So Mr. Potty Mouth, Jamal Bowman, has lost his race, right? And he has cried racism. It's not because I have a bad attitude. It's not because I portray myself like some hoodlum. It's not because I've made poor decisions. It's not because I 
whatever else he's done to really not do uh, a proper campaign. But no, it's because it's the white man who's come to get the black man. And the white man is a racist, even though the, the white man is a uh, team Democrat. They all team Democrat, but the white man is the, he, that it's now he's the racist, right? Any other time, you know, it's all kosher. You believe in Democrat, then we're all good. But as soon as you separate yourself and you say, you know, I support this or I support that, then, and if you lose an election, it, then he's a right supremacist. So what we're going to take a look at now is a debate between Bowman and his, uh, and the winner, Lattimore, I think his name, Latter, Latter something. So let's take a look at that right now. Turning now to the voters decide. It was a heated debate tonight between two Democrats squaring off in a congressional primary in the Bronx and Westchester. CBS 2's Dick Brennan is here now with more on that. Dick? Christina Maurice, yes, two Democrats, but with plenty of differences. Congressman Jamal Bowman is trying to hold on to his seat, but facing a strong challenge from Westchester County Executive George Latimer. Tonight, neither was pulling any punches. Let's talk about how you rush to the scene to get press coverage when there's a tragedy. <laughs> no, that's exactly right. Yeah, you but see, you're nowhere to be found. Tonight, an intense face-off between Congressman Jamal Bowman and Westchester County Executive George Latimer, the pair clashing on many issues, including the future direction of Washington. We almost have another President Trump because of the lack of action from my opponent and so many others on these issues. We may have a President Trump because Jamal is good at talking but not good at delivering. Latimer is challenging Bowman in the Democratic primary in New York's 16th Congressional District, a central flashpoint tonight, the Israel-Hamas war. We should not be sending any more weapons at this time to Israel. They are engaged in collective punishment by killing mostly women, children, and babies in Gaza. What the congressman fails to mention in all of this is the role that Hamas has played. It's not merely a simple condemnation of what they did. What they did that day on October 7th. The pair was asked how to bridge the wealth gap between the rich and poor. We need reparations, first and foremost. My opponent does not support reparations. I support reparations wholeheartedly. And he has a bill that has minimal sponsors, $14 trillion. That's twice the national budget. That's not a serious proposal. On the issue of jobs for the district, the candidates declared where they stood on whether to turn the Empire City side in Yonkers into a full-fledged casino. Yes, wholeheartedly. No, there are many ways to create jobs other than another casino. Now, polling right now gives Latimer the lead, but many voters are still undecided. Both candidates say they will support the winner of the Democratic primary. That's next week. Marisa Christian. Seen that? Heard that? Good. Typical squad member rhetoric, right? Um, like the AHOC, his partner in crime, his partner at their bogus, wild and crazy and stupid uh, rally in the Bronx, where you saw it, where he was acting the fool. We just didn't play the AHOC in, in all of this. But just like her, he is refusing to put business in his district that's going to help the constituents. They want to put a casino in. I mean, Democrats should be all on board for, for casinos. I mean, it's gambling, it's drinking, it's probably prostitution and all kinds of stuff, but at least it'll bring jobs. But he doesn't even want that. So again, typical Democrat, not really giving options to their community because they don't want to grow their community. They just want to grow other areas of the world. He mentioned in a speech, it's not here, but how he supports the Congo, how he supports is uh, Palestine, how he supports every other place in the country, except for the country that he lives in. He supports everywhere and he's passionate about it. And that's why he's lost his seat because of how passionate he is about other countries. So Jamal Bowman is not or has not um, conceded the race. He has not reached out to his opponent and say, good race, my fellow Democrat. Good race, my fellow Democrat. No, at his campaign speech or his final speech to his um, constituents, I guess, his voters, um, he was crying racism 
and that the system is really rigged against him and black people. So we're going to take a look at Jamal Bowman's commencement speech or is his failing speech? Whatever. It's just another speech. heard that good you should be outraged when your democrat congressman gets on the stage and makes a fool of himself you should be and so the people were and they said enough is enough and we're voting you out but you can't accept that so it has to be oh republicans who are at fault for this when it's democrat who defeated you but it's republicans who are at fault the what is it apac pour all this money to get you out of office but it's republicans that you're blaming for this why aren't you blaming your democrat colleagues why aren't you bl blaming your democrat party because it wasn't just the constituents that came out and voted against you or they didn't vote for you, but you had people like your governor, the, I don't know if those kids in the Bronx know what a computer is, Kathy Hoko. I mean, she did insult you in your community, right? Not too long ago. Yes, ma'am, she did. Yes, sir, she did. So, but she came out here again and put another hammer to your coffin because she endorsed uh, your opponent. And um, even though you brought out washed up Bernie socialist Sanders out, that wasn't enough. And when you brought out socialist Alexandria Ocasio Ocoteza, that still wasn't enough because the people are revolting. The people are saying no to these progressives and you are the first to go, and I pray that there are many more, including the AHOC. Kind of when I think about it now, I'm wondering, did she win her primary? Is she is she is she gonna face a Democrat? Is she going to face a Republican in November? Last cycle, she won it at a landslide. What's her race happening now? What's happening to her race now? I mean, what happened to you? It was great, but you know, I want to see it happening to all of you, to the AHOC, to the Ilhan Omars, to the um uh Presley, Kiana Presleys, and all of you. I want you out. One down. How many is them in the in the pack? I don't know. One down, five more to go, six more to go, all of them to go. So Jamal Bowman is out. He's out of Congress. And I'm really excited to see who will be next, right? Out of the squad, who will be next? Will it be Ilhan Omar? Will it be the AHAC? Will it be Ayanna Presley? Will it be, who's the others? Who's the others? I can't remember, but I'm eager to see who's next because this goes to show you if, People, if we 
as the Republican Party are motivated enough. It took $20 million to, to get this guy out. If we as Republicans, who have more money, by the way, than these Democrats, decide to say, you know what? I want to put my money to good use and I want to clean up Congress and I want to put conservatives in. We would win the generals, obviously, if they don't cheat. It's always a possibility. That's always going to be the possibility. And I'm seriously, seriously afraid that that may happen in November 2024. Seriously, friend, just keeping it 100. But yeah, they may cheat. But it shows you with this race that it's possible to win. It's possible if you put enough money in. It's not only George Soros that has money. We on the right have money too. We have mil billionaires. We have billionaires and millionaires. And if somebody takes up the if somebody takes up the baton and says, "I'm going to put my money in." I'm going to put it in the super PAC and I'm going to put my money in and we're going to get rid of all of the squads. We're going to get rid of them. Corey Bush and all of them. I think it can happen. Is there a Republican out there who can do that? Do we have somebody who can do that so we can start getting rid of these psychotics in our Congress? I think that was a rant friend more than a closing. It was a rant. So that's going to be it, friends. That's going to be it for this video. Um, I was really glad to do it. I really wish I'd just gone live with this, but I wouldn't have had the, the pieces the way I laid it out, right? So go, love going live, but I, I'm, I, I love piecing the, the, the puzzle together in this kind of a format, even though it takes so much longer than just pressing the button and going live. Um, but this is labor of love. This is what we do. And so I thank you for taking the time to listen, watch, and get something out of it. So that was good news. That was really good news because, again, it shows that we can always oust the far left. We can get them out. It's doable to get an incumbent out of office. It's doable. And so we just have to do the hard work and get it done. Plus throwing bags and bags and bags of money to get it done. So anyway, friends, thank you for taking the time. I'm going to leave it there. God bless you and keep you. And I will see you in another video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me out. And I'm so grateful to all of the new members and all of the subscribers. Thank you, guys. And it really means the world to me. And you can see I'm just, I just keep pushing and doing it. And I'm going to see y'all tonight for the debates. It's decided. I'm going to live stream it with Voy Nicholas. And so we're going to do it tonight. We may have some hiccups. I don't know what, but we're going to do it. We're going to come live tonight at about 8.30. Um, maybe I'll get a thumbnail together and throw that up there. Uh, yeah, we're going to come live tonight at 8.30 covering the debates. I think they start at about 9 o'clock. So we're going to talk some foolishness ahead of time, get us pumped up, and then it's going to be live for the debate. So I'll see you tonight. God bless you and keep you.